So in this lesson, guys, 5-4, we're going to talk about exponential and logarithmic equations. And while we've already done that, we're going to really focus on higher level equations, okay? And really much more complex than what you did in 5-3 in, uh, in the sections before. Um, what we're going to do is the first several slides deal with exponential equations. We're going to do those in part 1, okay, or part A. And then logarithmic equations we're going to do in a video for part B. Okay, so we're going to have two different videos here. Um, so let's keep going. So first of all, if you happen to be given something in an exponential equation, it's going to look like something like you've seen before. Like, for example, 3 to the x equals 81. And so you say to yourself, well, how can I solve this exponential equation? And one of the strategies you learned was to try to get the bases the same, right? So if you can do uh, convert 81 to some number with a base of 3, which is 3 to the fourth power, then you're able to drop out the base, which is the same, and set the exponents equal, and you can solve it, okay? And so obviously, whenever you have an exponential equation, that's going to be your first go-to strategy. Now, the problem is, is you can't do this every time. For example, what if you have 3x equals um, 52, right? You know that 3 to the third power is 27. You know that 3 to the fourth power is 81. So x is some number between, right, 3 and 4, but you don't have a way of solving it because all you've learned to do is set the base to be equal. Um, so today we're going to talk about how we can use logarithms to um, basically cancel or undo the exponent. We're able to pull the exponent out of the exponent spot. We're able to get that variable out and therefore we'll be able to solve. Now methods two and three talk about that. However, I'm just going to you can read it for yourself, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. So we're going to go to this slide here, and we have here, obviously, in 1 and 2, we have a, a problem like that. It's an exponential function. Again, the first 12 examples are all exponential functions. Notice the variable is in the exponent spot. Now, in 1, notice that the base is e. And since the base is the same, this is like what we did the other day where we just take the exponents and they set them equal to each other. Now, it's a little bit different than the other day in that we didn't really have x squareds. You know, the exponents were just x, so it was linear. This ends up being quadratic, which again, you're going to solve like a normal quadratic. Remember, you set it equal to 0. We'll move x squared to the other side, and we're going to factor um, this. So we know that x squared minus 3x minus 4 is the product of x minus 4 and x plus 1. And then we set each factor equal to 0, and we solve for x. So x plus 1 equals 0, so x equals negative 1. And so there's two solutions here, and we don't have to worry about checking them. In exponential functions, any solution you get is going to be acceptable. When we get to logarithmic functions, we'll have to look to see if one of the answers might be extraneous or not, okay? So let's do the second one. So the second one's going to follow the same pattern. They both have a base of, of um, e, so we drop it out. We get 2x equals x squared minus 8. And then again, I'm going to solve this quadratic. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, um, and then I'm going to factor what's left, and that's x minus 4 and an x plus 2. Um, again, x minus 4 equals 0, so x is 4. x plus 2 equals 0, so x is negative 2. And so these were what you did before. Uh, the bases were already the same, so these were quite simple compared to what we're going to see coming up. Um, now we're going to get to some of the more challenging ones where we're going to have to introduce this idea of using logarithmic logs to cancel exponents. So I think this is a little bit of a typo here. I think what this meant to say is number three. I don't think that three was supposed to be there, but we're going to leave it and we're going to solve it with that three. Um, your goal at first is to isolate wherever the variable is. So since the variable is the exponent of two to the x power, 
that's what you're trying to isolate. So the first thing you're going to do is divide both sides by 3 so that you can get the exponent part by itself. 42 divided by 3 is 14. Now here is where you start to struggle, right? Because of course your first instinct is to set 14 to a base of 2. However, you can't do that. You know that um, 2 to the 3rd power is 8, 2 to the 4th power is 16. So x is between 3 and 4, but we don't know what. It's a decimal. So what we're going to do is this is our first step into inserting a log here. It, we learned that if you happen to have log base 2 of 2 to the x power, one of the properties says that log base 2 of 2 will cancel, and it'll just leave you with x. And so as long as you do the same thing to the right side of the equation, it's still balanced. So if I insert a log base 2 to the left, I have to insert log base 2 to the right. So I'm going to get x equals log base 2 of 14. Now, if you happen to have your calculator, and you can, um, your calculator has the feature where you can plug in the base of 2 and the 14 and get the equals part, then obviously do that. Now, if your calculator does not have that feature, then you have to do the change of base, which you learned to do and you did on the, you know, on the, we learned in 5.3, I believe. And so how you do that is you're either going to do log the common log of 14 over which is log base 10 over log of 2 or you're going to do the natural log of 14 over the natural log of 2 and when you do the math you're going to get approximately 3.8073 and so that's what x equals so remember, initially, we said we knew that x was some value between 3 and 4, and it is. It's 3.8. So now we'll try the last one. Again, here we start. Uh, again, we want to isolate the 5 to the x power, so we're going to divide both sides by 2. And we're going to get 5 to the x power equals 16. And so, again, I cannot make 16 a base of 5, so I can't. Uh, working out the way I've learned before. So I'm going to have to introduce log base 5. By doing that, I know that this cancels, leaving me with just x on the left. And whatever I do to the left, I have to do to the right. So I have to do log base 5 on the right as well. So x equals log base 5 of 16. Again, if you have this feature in your calculator, you can plug it in like that and get the answer. And if you don't, you can do, again, the log or the natural log of 16 over the log or natural log of 5. And you're going to get x is approximately equal to 1.7227. And that's the answer. So this is how we use logs to basically undo exponents. And it's a great thing to do. It's super easy once you know how to do it. All right, so now we go here, we've got natural, we've got base E, we've got a natural number, right? So we're going to just do the same thing. Um, here we have right now E um, to the X power plus 5 equals 60. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides because I want to isolate E to the X. So E to the X equals 55. And again, I can't make 55 a base of E, so I'm going to insert a log. So since my base on the left is E, I'm going to do log base E as well, and log base E on the right. On the left side, log base E and E cancel out, leaving me with X. And on the right, I've got log base E of 55. Now again, you can also write LN of 55, which is much easier uh, and cleaner, I think. So I always kind of write log E until I get to the last step. And, you know, once I, once I write it here, then I clean it up and turn it into ln. Um, but anyway, so now I know that x equals the natural log of 55, which is approximately equal to 4.0073. And there's the answer. So let's keep going. So we have here um, e to the power of x minus 7 equals 23. 
Again, I'm going to leave um, e to the x on the left, and I'm going to add 7 to both sides, and I'm going to get 30. So I have e to the x power equals 30. I know that um, I can't you know, make the bases the same, so I'm going to do log base e and log base e, right? So I've got over here log base e and e cancel, so x equals ln of 30, uh, which is approximately equal to 3.4012. I'll round it to the four decimal places. So I just keep going. Each problem that I do is just going to be a little bit more um, intricate, you know, than the ones before it. Like, for example, here, I'm still trying to get what is um, raised to the, where, wherever the exponent is, or rather, wherever the variable is, that's what I'm trying to isolate or get by itself. So I've got to start, you know, I know I have to start by adding 4 to both sides. So I have 2 times 3 to the 2x minus 5 power equals 15. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. I'm going to get 3 to the 2x minus 5 power equals 7.5. And so now again, now I have my base of 3 on the left, and I have a base of 7.5 on the right. So I'm going to insert my log here. So I'm going to do log base 3 on both sides. By doing that, I'm going to cancel out log base 3 of 3, and I'm going to be left with 2x minus 5 equals log base 3 of 7.5. Now, I'm solving for x, and so this is just going to require a few more steps. I know that to get x by itself, I have to add 5 to both sides, so I'll do that. So I've got 2x equals log base 3 of 7.5, like that, plus 5. And I know that I have to divide the whole side by 2, both sides by 2. So my final answer is going to be x equals log base 3 of 7.5 plus 5, all divided by 2. And when you go to your calculator, you're going to have to take time to do this. Um, Again, if your calculator has um, the feature of being able to type in log base 3 and then also the 7.5, it'll be a little easier. You may have to use, you know, your parentheses successfully. Um, if your calculator doesn't have that feature, then you have to do the whole change of base, like the natural log of 7.5 divided by the natural log of 3 plus 5 all over 2. Either way, when I do the math correctly, this is what I should get on my calculator. I should get that x is approximately equal to 3.4170. That should be my solution. And so we'll go to the last problem over here on the right, and we'll do the same thing. So again here, we want to isolate the part with the variable, so we're going to start by subtracting 4 from both sides. We get 6 times 2 to the x plus 5 power equals 7. Divide both sides by 6. We're going to get 2 to the x plus 5 power equals 7 sixths. And then, again, I know that I'm going to have to insert this um, log here. So let me just move this over a little bit. And so I'm going to have to insert log base 2 so I can free up that exponent. And I'll do the same thing to the right side. So my exponent is now free, um, and my right side is log base 2 of 7 over 6. And then I will subtract 5 from both sides. So x equals log base 2 of 7 over 6, whatever that is, minus 5. Again, if you have that feature in your calculator, you can just insert it and move left to right. Um, or you can do, again, like log or natural log, natural log of 7 over 6 over the natural log of 2. That's the change of base, minus 5. And when I do that, if I do it all correctly, I'm going to get that x is approximately equal to negative 4.7776. There's my solution. 
Now this last page here that we're gonna do in this exponential function sections definitely gets much more complex, okay? The reason it's more complex is because notice on your exponents, what happens in this one is if you notice, you've got an exponent on the left with a variable, it's x, and then you also have another one on the right. And so if I was just to do what I taught you in the last slide, you know, where you're just going to insert you know, log base three, so this cancels. Well, if you do log base three of four to the x plus two, this is not going to cancel. And so that's why it makes it more complex. So there's a whole nother way to solve this one where you're just gonna insert a natural log for both. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the one thing I do want you to see is that this here is a typo, okay? We don't want that uh, there, okay? So that decimal shouldn't be there. It should just be, 3 to the 2x minus 1 power equals the number 4 to the x plus 2 power, okay? Um, let me actually give myself a little more space here. 4 to the x plus 2 power. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do here, and I want you to kind of follow the steps. First thing we're going to do is we're going to insert the natural log of 3 and the natural log of 4. So it could be log base e or ln. But basically, I'm going to insert an ln in both sides. Now, that doesn't help me cancel anything. That's not why I did it. Um, it's just this is the way to get them to have the same log. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take these exponents here and here. And we know that when we have a log and the number log of 3 to some power, we can move that power to the front and multiply it to the actual log. So we're going to rewrite this as 2x minus 1 times ln to the of 3. And over on the other side, it's going to be x plus 2 times ln of 4. Now that we did this, now we realize we've got a multiplication problem here that's going to need distribution. I know that I can distribute ln of 3 to 2x minus 1. And so when I do that, I'm going to get 2x times ln to the of 3, like that, minus, and, and I don't even have to do this uh, parentheses that I keep doing. I'm not really sure why I keep doing it. It doesn't really have to be there. 2x times the natural log of 3 minus ln 3. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to distribute ln of 4 to both of those terms. So I'm going to do x times ln 4 plus 2 ln of 4. And so I distribute it. So now I see again that I, I have four terms here. I've got 2x times ln of 3. I've got this, this one here minus. I have this one here, x ln 4, and I have this one. And notice I kind of put single lines and double lines because the ones with the single underline, those have x in them. They're terms with x and the other ones are terms without x. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to move all the terms that have an x in it to one side of the equation, and I'm going to want to move the terms that don't have an x to the other side. And so I'm going to basically subtract this, you know, subtract x ln of 4 from both sides. So over here I'm going to get 2x ln of 3 minus x ln of 4, and then I'm going to add ln of 3 to both sides. Okay, so that's going to equal then 2 ln of 4 plus ln of 3. So I kind of added ln of 3 to both sides and I subtracted, you know, x ln of 4 from both sides. And so I ended up getting this. Okay, so now I'm, I'm at this level here, right? So I'm here now. Um, and then I realize, all right, I can factor out an x on this left side. I can group these two terms together, and I can factor an x out. So if I factor x out, I get 2 times ln of 3 minus ln of 4. And over here, I still have 2 ln of 4 plus ln of 3. So my last step, again, remember, my goal in all of this was to solve for x. So if I want to get x by itself, if I divide both sides by 2 ln 3 minus ln 4, 2 ln 3 minus ln of 4, 
these are going to cancel out and I'm going to be left with X equals that. So in reality, X equals this um, expression. Now, how do I get to the final answer? Or what is the final answer, right? Well, if you go to your calculator and you do two times the natural log of four plus the natural log of three all over or divided by two times the natural log of three minus the natural log of four, you're going to get the correct answer, which is you're going to get 4.7738 or something like that, okay? Now, um, there are still some other ways you could have done this. So had you just left it like that and kind of inserted it in your calculator with different grouping symbols, for example, I probably would have done this plus this, you know, gotten an answer, and then I would have divided by, I would have had an outer parentheses, I might have done, you know, something like this, but I would have grouped it to just make sure it all worked. However, um, there is a different way um, and a, a way that you could use some of the skills you learned in the last section. For example, you learned how to condense, okay? So you learned how to take, let's say this numerator, let me just kind of go in a different color here and condense it. Uh, this is ln of four squared plus ln of three over, this is ln of three squared minus ln of four. So if I keep simplifying, this is ln of 16 plus ln of three. Well, remember addition means that it's really, right? Um, this is going to be ln of 48. It's going to be the product of 16 and 3. And over here, this is going to be um, ln of 9 minus ln of 4. So that's ln of 9 divided by 4. So my x is going to be approximately equal to this. Now, I think this is easier to put in my calculator than this but it requires more work because I have to remember to condense and condense properly. But if you were to type that in your calculator, you should get the same answer, 4.7738 if I round it. And so again, remember that condensing is a strategy you can use and it'll make it easier to enter into your calculator. Um, so again, that was the answer for number nine. I'm going to erase number nine so I can keep going. You guys can screenshot it or do whatever uh, you need to do there for nine, okay? Um, okay, so then when I come over here to number 10, I'm in the same boat. Uh, obviously, if I was to insert a log here, I would do log base two, but that wouldn't do anything about the five. It would just complicate my life there. So I'm going to do... Um, again, I'm going to do the natural log of 2 to the x plus 3 power equals the natural log of 5 to the x power. Then I'm going to take these exponents and I'm going to move them to the front. So I'm going to have x plus 3 times the natural log of 2, and that's going to be x times the natural log of 5. In this left side here, I'm going to distribute the natural log of 2. So it's going to be x ln of 2 plus 3 ln of 2 is going to equal x ln of 5, okay? And then I want everything that has to do with, with, with the x on the same side. So I'll probably move, um, I guess I'll move this one over. Um, so I'll do, you know, minus x ln of 2 to the right side and get rid of it over there. So now on the left side, I have um, 3 ln of 2. On the right side, I have the two x ones, right? And again, I don't really need the parentheses. I know what I'm doing here. So ln of 2. Okay, so now I'm going to take from this side, I'm going to factor out the x. So 3 ln of 2 over here, factor out the x, and I'm going to get ln of 5 minus ln of 2. And if I divide both sides by ln 5 minus ln 2, I'm going to get um, what x equals. So ln 5 minus ln of 2. And so I know that x equals 
this, whatever that is, right? So again, we're going to go to our calculators and try to figure out what that equals. So um, I could consolidate the bottom if I wanted. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But if you type this in your calculator correctly, you have to practice this, you should get that x is approximately equal to approximately 2.2694. And again, if I had consolidated this, um, I might have gotten, um, you know, 3ln2, um, that's going to be ln of 2 cubed, which is 8, over, and then ln5 minus ln2 is ln of 5 over 2. And again, if you solve it this way, you should get the same answer. And you do, 2.2694. Okay, so again, consolidating it, the only thing I like about condensing it or consolidating it is that when you type it in your calculator, it's a lot easier to get the answer, okay? But again, if you do the work right, you follow the steps, you're going to get the right answer. Now, this last section is um, a little bit different. You're going to probably have to use logs at some point, but initially to solve, you're going to have to first try to factor this kind of quadratic um, expression you have here with these natural numbers. So one of the strategies we learned in the past was to take something like this and turn it into a u value. Remember, u equals e to the x power. And then u squared equals e to the 2x. Okay, And what this allows us to do is to sub in u squared for the first term and u for the second uh, variable as well. And so this just makes it easier to factor. Okay, so this is going to be u uh, minus 2, u minus 1 equals 0. So u minus 2 is 0, so u is 1, uh, 2 rather, sorry. And then u minus 1 is 0, so u equals 1. Now that I have that u equals 2 and u equals 1, I can now sub in for e to the x power for u. So e to the x is 2 and e to the x equals 1. And now I can do whatever I need to do to solve these. e to the x is 2. I know that I can just come here and insert the natural log in front. Because I know this is log base e of e. It'll cancel. So x equals the natural log of 2. And I would just go to my calculator and type that in. And that's approximately equal to 0.6931. So x equals that. And then I know over here, I don't even have to do this. I could do natural log on both, but I know that anything to the zero power equals one. And so I know that x has to equal zero here, okay? Because e to the zero equals one. So I have two values here for my x, okay? Now I'm gonna come over to this one and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I come over here and I'm gonna make um, u equal to e to the x and u squared is e to the 2x. So again, I know this is u squared minus 7u plus 12 equals 0. This is u minus 3 and u minus 4 equals 0. u minus 3 is 0, u is 3, and u minus 4 equals 0, so u equals 4. So now that I have what u equals, I'm able to sub back in e to the x. Whoops e to the x power for um, the u. So e to the x equals 3, and e to the x equals 4. And so again, to solve these, I'm going to free up this exponent by doing the natural log of both sides. That's going to cancel. x equals the natural log of 3. I do the same thing on the other side. x equals the natural log of 4. And that's the answer, but if we do want the, the actual answer, then you're going to actually type these into your calculator. So when you go to your calculator and you do the natural log of 3, it's 1.0986. And when you do the natural log of 4, it's 1.3863. And so these are your two solutions. So uh, you've seen all the different kinds of problems we can throw at you. Now it's just time you need to practice. Uh, there'll be a subsequent video. Um, the Part B video, and that's going to start from the next slide.